Buhari no mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the other part of the interview will continue to look at Buhari no mix. Again, five years. Uh, Dr. Bongo Ade, an economist with the Lagos Business School, will give me his own perspective. I've heard from the president's perspective, so let's get to hear in the panel. Okay, that's Dr. Bongo there. <laughs> Dr. Bongo, good morning to you. Welcome to the program. Hi, it's Lagos. Good morning, uh, uh, and thanks for having me. We are doing well in Lagos. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so we can allow Ajurigo because he has other things to to do. Uh, Dr. Adi, I guess you've been listening to or you've been watching Ajurin Gilali. Uh, speak to me about what you think from an economic standpoint, uh, because he's also giving us what the scorecard of President Buhari has been at least in the last five years. Some of it, of course, we can verify. The Anko Boras program, DBN, um, um, you know, disbursing monies as loans to SMEs, a lot of things. In fact, yesterday I started it on the show. But give me your own perspective. Well, uh, yes, I did listen to uh, a jury, um, you know, in the very passionate attempt he made to defend the government and then the policies of the past uh, five years. Uh, um, Anyway, I also have listened to him talk about the Siemens and uh, Nigeria deal that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting off uh, right now. So I think he was very articulate when he was defending that Siemens uh, deal. Uh, I think he made it, he did a very good job there. Uh, but this morning, you know, so I, I okay. Um, anyway, so this is not. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, looking at what he said. But let's just look at the facts because. When he claimed that uh, we've had a ramp up of revenues from customs, from the MPA, from different sources, uh, from FIRS and all of that. So it's also nice to remind him that we still run a very deficit budget. And in the last, uh, um, you know, five years, we've been running a deficit budget. So the deficit budget um, of, you know, very huge deficit. So. Um, of course, it's not a bad thing to run a deficit budget when you can borrow, so that's not a, a problem. But, uh, you know, it's, it's also good to remind him that if we have, uh, because he's talked about sustainability and, you know, fiscal sustainability. So it's also nice to tell him that our budget uh, is still in deficit, a huge deficit for that. Okay, so he talked about tax also, right? Uh, so it's also good to remind him that the bulk of the tax that we receive in Nigeria, you know, is just 5%, uh, which is uh, personal income tax. Um, uh, CIT, uh, corporate income tax, is still about 1% or so, which are, uh, is one of the lowest uh, in the world. Of course, I do appreciate the work that the FIRS has done over the few years, you know, to ramp up, uh, you know, bring more people into the tax uh, pool. So that is, that is um, uh, you know, something credit, creditable to the government. And then talking about diversifying the economy, you know, the, the economy, well, in a way, you were actually telling him that the economy has been, is diversified. Well, it depends on how you look at diversification. Yes, if uh, when you look at uh, primary products, basic stuff, yes, our economy produces all of those things, and then the basic structure structure hasn't changed from what it was even in the 1970s, even in the 1960s. So then we could talk about a more diversified economy. And when you talk about diversification of the economy, when your export profile is diversified, because that's what we are looking at in terms of diversification, how much of what you produce go out of your country, so in terms of export. So that's when you talk about re-diversification. But unfortunately, as it is today, we are still heavily, um, in fact, one of the most undiversified economies in the world. Even in Africa, we are the most undiversified. Uh, if you look at uh, what we call uh, the ECI, the Export Complexity Index, uh, Nigeria ranks lowest in Africa, even lower than countries like Niger and Chad. So what it means that the complexity of our production is just uh, very minimal. So meaning that it can compete, you know, anywhere else in the world. So we have also lamented this issue about our productivity, um, you know, meltdown. So the economy is highly unproductive. So those were one of the promises, uh, some of the promises that the government gave while coming into power in 2015. And we've waited, you know, in foot 
uh, infertility to see the you know uh, the, 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 those uh, promises come to life. But unfortunately, we've not seen it. So what I'm saying is the fact that the economy has not diversified. Our export base, our export profile is undiversified. Um, the bulk of what we produce here is still basic stuff. Uh, there's no complexity. There is no real productivity in the in the economy. So it is important for us to look at these things objective, objectively, not in the manner of propaganda or trying to defend because we want to justify our pay. So that is not actually right to do. So it's not about rhetoric. So we have to look at it. The bulk of our revenue uh, comes from oil. And then you're talking about the economy that is in fiscal uh, sustainability. I mean, what about our debt, pro uh, debt problem right now? We have very huge debt problem. Um, if you go to the debt clock, you see that right now, go Google it, the debt clock, you will see that our debt is about $33 billion. Uh, so he was saying what was it was. Yes, before 2015, it was single digit, was about $8 billion. You look at that, the, 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 the data is there for you to see. So the debt has been going up, and then we're beginning to worry that we're getting ourselves into a very difficult uh, position where we damage even our capacity to borrow further. Because, um, again, I, I spoke about that uh, the last time I was on TV, about the, the, you know, the, the precarious situation of our debt profile right now, because the government's independent revenue, about 96% of, of that is used uh, for debt servicing. So that puts us in a very dangerous uh, uh, position, and that has happened over the past few years. Now we have a growth problem. So we have growth problem in the economy. The economy has uh, barely averaged 1.5% in the past uh, five years okay so um <laughs> we don't want to talk about that we, you know the 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 population problem is there so we have a population that is growing at three percent and then we have an economy that is not even uh, able to grow uh, half that okay. you know in a year okay, so that is not uh, something to make anybody smile okay Do dr adi just um i allowed you for like two or three minutes to speak your mind on perhaps what you think and react to what Ajiri said. In the midst of all this, five years of Buhari no mix, are there any upsides for you? Because Ajiri actually did enumerate the upsides of this government's administration. They've done this, they've done that. Infrastructure, Lagos, Ibadan High Speed Railway, uh, Lagos, uh, that's talking about infrastructure now. I can go into that. If we have time, we can go into that later. But are there upsides for you in the you know what you say. Are there upsides for this government? Well, um, the upside I would see, um, I, I don't know if I would attribute it to what government consciously did. Okay, because uh, uh, somehow we, you know, when we expected the economy to really melt down completely, but we saw it, you know, coming out of that. So I like some part of uh, the status policies they've implemented, because when you look at also the list of achievement that Femi Adesina um, uh, released the other day, so you could see that they were all, t you know, t you know, going towards uh, uh, support for states, support for public sector. So kind of a, a status uh, system. Um, so we know the disadvantages of such. But again, of course, not, not, it's not all bad, because uh, in that sense, uh, we could see somehow we started to reach a certain level of uh, internal um, uh, uh, you know, capacity when it comes to uh, our agri agriculture, especially rice, after the closure of borders. Yes, some economics, the classical economics, will argue that it's a bad thing to do. But for me, I think it makes sense for us to try to defend, sometimes protect the local industry and give them opportunities actually to grow so that we can, you know, uh, step 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 down on, on um, anti-dumping and all of that. So that is what I would say, say that, okay, that's been a major achievement of the government. But be, besides that, I think that government, still, since it's still in power, um, it's also a credit to them that they have opportunity to listen to Nigerians, to know what they have done wrong and then they have very good opportunity to you know to uh, to make things better you know to actually fulfill their campaign promises they have three good years and it's a, it's a good opportunity for them to make things work where do you think the weakest link is in this administration where do you think the weakest link is coming from based on the three pillars that president buhari campaigned on let me take it from that angle uh, economy anti corruption then security where's the weakest link Uh, repeat. Okay, um, Dr. Adi, did you hear me? No, no. I, I'm just hearing okay, you now. Okay, I'm okay, okay. Yes, I asked earlier where you think the weakest link for this administration is coming from based on the three pillars that President Buhari 
campaigned on anti-corruption, security and economy. Where is the weakest link for him? Um, I can tell that all the wings have been very, very weak. So I can tell you that each, uh, which one is uh, weaker than the other. Because uh, for me, um, five years down the line, we're still having insecurity issues, very serious ones, and every day is increasing. Uh, Boko Haram menace has always been has been there. Uh, so each day we hear that they've been, um, you know, stamped out. But then the next day they, are, you know, conquer, you know, take more territories and all of that. And then, um, in addition to that, we now have the increase, the rampage of uh, Fulani headsmen, you know, all over the country, which have disrupted our agricultural, um, you know, activities in so many places in the core, uh, you know, food basket region of the of the country and in so many places and they, are, they continue to terrorize and we have not seen any sort of deliberate or you know consistent government response to that crisis so that's been on so when it talks about security nigerians i can tell you that we are more insecure now in many places um, except when you live in some places in Lagos where you can, okay, maybe you don't have uh, such threats. But every other country, traveling on the road these days is a nightmare that nobody wants to undertake because of the high level of insecurity. So you talk about anti-corruption. Yes, I think it has always, it seems to have been one-sided. One-sided in the sense that uh, we see that, well, you know, if you're with the government, uh, then you are good. But if you're not, then you, 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 you will be in trouble because... Uh, we've seen that, so but, but we, that, we but, see but, 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 that. But, 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 so Dr. Adi, hold on a bit. Ajuri actually did mention earlier the APC chief, uh, the uh, chief whip, I think, uh, is is still in prison now. So he did mention that as part of fighting anti I've lost you. Yes. yes. Okay, Dr. Adi, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Okay. Ajuri did mention earlier when he, he uh, looked at anti-corruption, he did say that the chief whip... It's, I lost you again. Oh, okay. I think... The network has been very... Okay. Should we take a break to fix that? Should we? Can you hear me? Okay, let's quickly take a... I can a... hear you now, please, if you come again. Okay. Okay, you can hear me now. Okay, what I was actually asking earlier is uh, Ajuri did yes. make a case that... The APC chief whip is in prison right now. So would it be right to say it's one-sided? Um, you know, we have to look at five. We are looking at five years, not just now. So we are looking at five years. So uh, five years, yes. Um, again, the thing about corruption in Nigeria, there's lack of transparency. That's the thing. So um, to fight corruption, the first thing is to increase transparency. So let's look at the data, because uh, you know everything is about data. Let's look at our ranking in the um, anti-corruption uh, ranking, uh, Transparency International. So where have we been in the last five years? So I thought, uh, you know, given the kind of uh, uh, momentum and impetus that the government came up with uh, for corruption, I would have expected us to have been, you know, to have moved up that rank. I mean, in terms of uh, corruption uh, perception lessening, but it has increased uh, given the report that we get from Transparency International. So the last time they released their data, I think the government went after them, you know, disputing the data. But we don't have to dispute all that thing because other countries don't do that. So, uh, so when you have the data, then you don't need to argue. <laughs> When you have the data, you don't need to argue. Now, how do you think that this economy can survive this pandemic? Especially now we are, we are looking at President Buhari's uh, five years in office. There's a pandemic. The pain is there. I did reel out earlier oil price, what we expected to produce. Uh, oil price today, our production capacity till perhaps 2022 because of OPEC plus cuts. How do you think this administration is going to survive economically? Okay, this administration, yes, this administration can survive if they can change uh, track at this point in time. Uh, they have a very good opportunity to really do things better, as I said earlier. And how can they do that? If you look at the policies they've been reeling out, what they've done in the past five years, you notice that it's been like statist, okay? So draconian statist policies. And, and you know that private sector is very sensitive to such kind of things. So one thing that you haven't seen happen is where they said, okay, this is how we supported the private sector. So the private sector, in a, a, you know, uh, Julie was also talking about productivity and all of that. I needed to tell him that the manufacturing uh, sector has still, is still in recession. 
uh, okay, they keep talking about the high cost of uh, finance. You know, access to finance has been a big problem. So we haven't seen where, uh, you know, the economy has become uh, con more conducive for private sector um, active involvement. And that is what is required. And that is the last key, in fact, the last straw that the government needs to, uh, you know, latch onto is an opportunity for them. Now, open up the economy and let the private sector drive so many of the things. Government should just take itself out of so many other, so many things, make the conditions, uh, um, you know, conducive for private sector um, active engagement in Nigeria. Now, we talk about capital importation. The, uh, the MBS released the, the data the other day. So, yes, Nigeria is still an attractive environment for private uh, sector equity inflow. But we're not seeing a lot of that, okay? So we have the population, we have all the necessary ingredients. Even when it comes to infrastructure, is it every infrastructure that government must have to do? So how do we incentivize the private sector to get into, you know, to get involved? And that is what is left for the government to do, and that is the, uh, where our redemption lies. If you can bring in, you know, incentivize the private sector to come in and take, you know, um, leading role, the commanding head of this economy, I think things will work better. I think that's what has made a difference between this administration and the previous ones. The previous administrations, okay, were a little bit um, open to private sector engagement. But uh, we've seen a lot of restriction on the private se space uh, over the past five years. Now, Dr. Adi, Ajiri also did mention earlier, when I asked him the question of poverty, he did say that it should not just be attributed to this administration. Do you agree with him that perhaps the poverty numbers we're seeing right now, the world poverty clock, uh, our label is uh, the world's poverty capital as it is right now. Do you agree with him or with this administration yeah, that is a, it, is a, yeah, I, yes, is a culmination of, of years of economic decadence of what we are supposed to have done. Dr. Ali, are you still there? Okay. Yeah, I think I agree with uh, Adjuri on that point. Yes, uh, poverty that we see in Nigeria. The poverty we see in Nigeria today is truly, uh, you know, uh, the accumulation of years of uh, neglect. Now, our economy, even in the days uh, where between 2010 or 2008, and uh, maybe um, uh, between 2002, to 1999 to 2015, when we averaged 6% uh, uh, growth, growth rates. Mm. So we had growth, but we didn't have transformation Jobs. of the economy. Yeah. So there was no structural transformation of the economy. So the economy was like, um, you know, artificial, running on the periphery. So there was no structure behind the growth that we registered in those years. So meaning that some people, even though we had that growth, we still had an inequality problem. So, we, uh, but again, it has intensified over the over this. Then we had the economy buffers that you know people could get easy money, so that could help people out of poverty a little bit. Now, when we talk about poverty, it's not only the headcount uh, poverty in the indicator that we need to be looking at. We have to look at the other degrees. So we have uh, there's what we call the H1, the H2, and the H3. The H2 is has to do with the poverty gap. You know, how much do you need to take an average poor man to you know to get him to jump over the poverty line? And then there is the poverty severity. So we, you know, so we have to look at it when we decompose that. Look at looking at the poverty severity. So you notice that the severity of po uh, poverty seems to have increased. So people who were, let's say, okay, those who were just um, below the poverty, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, head count ra ra ratio, uh, the HCR, you know, they have fallen deeper and deeper into immiserization. And then to confirm that, if you look at the misery index. The misery index is, uh, you know, what you compute it from inflation, from interest rates, and then uh, uh, the growth, you know, the, 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 you know, so whether it's uh, growing or not growing, so you have to subtract or add. So when you put that together, you notice that the misery index in Nigeria has increased over time, and the rate of miserization has actually quadrupled in the past five years. So, and that's what made us the poverty capital of the world. So, yes, I do not blame the government for that. That has been a gradual and, a, you know, build, it's a build up from the past. But again, the government, uh, given its actions and inactions, seems to have, um, you know, um, also contributed to the massive rate of immiserization that we witness in the country today. Okay, final question. What, what st economic structure would catapult the Nigerian economy to prosperity? Uh, since President Buhari is celebrating five years in office, but it's uh, during this pandemic, so, you know, it's been overtaken by this pandemic. No one is even concentrating on that. What kind of economic structure should we have right now that will catapult us to economic 
prosperity. Okay, so um, two things. Um, we have, um, you know, the, the, uh, we have the enormous opportunity, by the way, to grow the economy. So um, the opportunities are still there, and, and Nigeria is, uh, you know, on a very um, strategic, is strategically positioned to take up those opportunities. But then it depends on the political will. Okay, so when you talk about uh, the economic structure, we have to be looking at the exports. How do we take over the, especially the West African and the African market? Now we have the African continental, uh, continental free trade okay. agreement, right? Yeah. So a lot of people are somehow skeptical about the prospects for Nigeria, but I'm telling you that it's a massive opportunity for us that we need to capitalize on. Okay. But then we have to build our competitiveness uh, locally. So private sector-led economy targeting export, export-led private sector-driven economy should take us to where we need to be. So um, we have practiced this statism over the years, and we see that it has not worked. The only time that Nigerians, many Nigerians, you know, smiled was the time there was a little bit of that air of liberalism, and which happened up to 2015. Okay, so that was when we really, you know, uh, started to, uh, you know, signal to the rest of the world that we had the capacity, we have the capability, really, to be a world power. I mean, maybe a continent, a regional power. We did that because, um, uh, okay, when you're saying that we don't even, you know, we are fiscally, uh, you know, sustainable and all of that, I'm telling you about the, our, there was a time when the president in Nigeria built a standard reserve to about 67 billion. And that gave, you know, it was a, a very powerful signal to the rest of the world. So we had all the rating agencies falling over themselves to rate Nigeria. So we had very triple A uh, ratings here and there. So we entered so many listings that we were not. So we started, we started to be taken seriously as an emerging economy, uh, not just in Africa, in the world. And then, you know, we had those acronyms. So we seem to have forgotten all these things in a, in a very quick as well. So we had the Mint, the mint okay, yeah. which was, uh, we had Mexico, Mexico we have uh, yeah, Indonesia, Indonesia, we have Nigeria, Nigeria we have and Turkey. Turkey. Yeah. So, but today we are falling off that. So what was the economic structure that gave us that? It was a private, you know, that um, incentive that the government created for private sector engagement that gave us that. But now we haven't seen that. It seems to be, you know, it's all about rhetorics, more or less, that we keep getting. Mm. Okay, I think, Dr. Ali, we'll leave it at that. I'll speak to you again sometime. Let's continue to watch the situation, especially as uh, we continue to fight coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria. It's not going to be an easy one. It's not going to be an easy road for us, isn't it? <laughs> what do you think? Recession for us this year? <laughs> it is not. Well, um, recession, well, is, we're already there anyway, but um, um, uh, I don't think that we need to be too, well, the worst has happened mm. anyway, so, but with the economy um, as a result, uh, tank, you know, uh, not necessarily, okay. not necessarily. Every economy in the world is challenged today. So mm. uh, what we need to do again, like I keep saying, there are, we have to rejig the system on which the economy is based. Okay. So there are so many things we need to okay. ramp up. Okay. You know, uh, private okay. capital, uh, philanthropic capital, okay, and all Dr. of that Adi, I, I, Okay, Dr. Adi, I think we'll leave it at that. Many thanks for joining me this morning.